Happy Thursday, folks. It is a beautiful day on the farm and a perfect day for this fixture between the San Diego Toreros and Stanford Cardinal, the number nine team in the country in women's soccer action. We welcome you inside Maloney Field at Larry Q. Kagan Stadium, folks. Kevin Dana on the call for you this afternoon. Let's start with the Toreros. They are playing some of their best soccer of the season. Right now coming off a win over UC Irvine. And one reason why they've been playing well is this player right here, Cameron Maddox, who leads the team in goals and points. That was a nice finish, a rare moment of positivity for the Toreros against Colorado in a 5-1 loss, but they have played much better since then, including a 2-1 win against CSU Bakersfield. This was the first goal, another one-time finish for Cameron Maddox inside the six for the Toreros as she has those six points off two goals and two assists. So from one freshman leading scorer on the team to another, it's Lumi Kostmeyer of Stanford. The freshman from Connecticut has gotten off to a blazing start this year. This is against Sacramento State, cleaning things up in the box. A nice finish there. She was wearing 29 in that game. She's now wearing 33. She leads the team with four goals. That leads all Pac-12 freshmen as well. How about that Golasso against USF? She had a brace against the Dons. Here's that other goal against San Francisco. A nice one struck from the top of the box. So don't go anywhere, folks. This is the fifth all-time meeting coming up between the Toreros and the Cardinal. We got the kickoff coming up next on Pac-12 Networks. Pac-12 Women's Soccer is brought to you by Clean Simple Eats, elevating life through food and fitness and by Sprouts Farmers Market, the official grocer of the Pac-12. Just about ready to roll here, Stanford and San Diego. The last non-conference weekend of the season for the Cardinal before they begin Pac-12 play. And it'll begin in a big way at USC for them on September 23rd. Meanwhile, the Toreros Still have a, a couple of more non-conference fixtures up on the deck after this one at Cal Poly in Northern Arizona before beginning WCC play against Pepperdine on October 1st. Mentioned this is the fifth all-time meeting. Stanford has taken three of the first four. USD's only win coming, oh, 26 years ago, just about a 1-0 triumph right here on the farm, 1-0. Stanford in white, USD in navy blue and sky blue. And the Cardinal will have the first touch of this one. Should be a good one. As the Toreros playing some of their best soccer of the season. Unbeaten in their last three. The Cardinal coming off a split of a trip to Chicago, a tough loss to Northwestern. Paul Ratcliffe saying disappointed in how we played in Northwestern, but was impressed with the bounce back in the 3-1 win at DePaul that gave Paul Ratcliffe his 400th win as a head soccer coach. And we are underway here from Kagan. Give you the starters for these teams. Uh, Stanford will have a quick throw in with Kennedy Wesley one of their outside backs alongside Paige Rubenstein in that backfield. They also have Julia, or an, excuse me, Madison Eisen and Elise Evans as the center backs. As top of the box with it was Jasmine Ike in the midfield. She'll be in the midfield alongside Julia Leontini and Sierra Angian. Up top, Abby Grubel, Lumi Kosmeyer, and Ali Montoya for the Cardinal. For USD, they have five listed defenders in their starting 11 with Ashley Wright, Millie Thistleton, Brianna Pearson, Malia Wallenswiz, and Adelie Broadbent. In the midfield, uh, Maron Suzuki, Eden Quiros, and Daniela Guerrero. And up top, Josephine Schlichting and Delaney Janone. The keepers for these teams, Sophine Kevorkian for USD and Ryan Campbell for Stanford. So Paul Ratcliffe just getting his 400th victory, and he said, I didn't know it was win number 400 until the team told me afterwards. And USD coming off their 300th win in program history. So we see Paul Ratcliffe, 345 of those wins coming 
on the farm. 345, 65, and 32 here. And 499 and 39 all-time has led the Cardinal to three national championships. Montoya. Nice play on the ball there to dispossess her by Malia Wallenswiz. It was a solid set piece taker for the Toreros. San Diego looking to counter. So it's a, a lot of youth on this Torero team combined with some transfers from Power 5 programs and, and some couple of four-year players who've been with the Toreros since their freshman campaign. A lot of youth on the Stanford side as well. Both teams getting big contributions from freshmen. And here's one of them in Ali Montoya. Trying to play that one across, looking for Grubel, but it's cut off. Guerrero, native of Lakeland, Florida. Here's some high pressure. And Montoya. Making San Diego work for it here along their back line. San Diego appear to be very comfortable with pressure in their 1-0 win over UC Irvine, a, a very deserving score line for the Toreros, getting their game winner in the 78th from Josephine Schlichting. And Stanford's last contest, a 3-1 win over DePaul. They easily could have had five or six goals in that game, the DePaul keeper. Doing a great job with a, a few amazing saves in that one. Stanford also hitting the crossbar, the post a couple of times. A dominant 3-1 win. Well, here's Pearson. Going to play that one through for Delaney Janone. Sizing up Rubenstein. Cuts back to her left. And the cross is headed away. Madison Eisen there defensively. Kevorkian way out of the box and inadvertently drilled one of her own teammates in the head. High boot there from Kosmeyer. And that one quickly whistled by our referee, Karen Collado. Our assistant refs, Naomi Nunes and Kristen Pahia. And the alternate, Michelle McMullen. It's our officiating crew today. Good early moments of positivity from the Toreros. Montoya couldn't quite get there. That'll roll all the way through to a Utah transfer in Pearson. So familiar with the Cardinal is Brianna Pearson. Played four years for the Utes, including a redshirt year in 2018. So this is her fifth year, graduated with a journalism degree at Utah. Ike coming up the pressure. And she wins a turnover. Very nicely done by Ike. Here's Grubel now. Into the box. And has that one booted away by Kevorkian. Some great stuff there from Jasmine Ike, who has really caught the eye of Paul Ratcliffe, the freshman from Palo Alto. Imagine someone who, who's doing a really great job for the Cardinal in the early going this season. Montoya to her right, gets the cross off. Bouncing ball in the box, threatening there, but couldn't get that finishing touch in the final third. Paul Ratcliffe saying it'll be key to cash in on those opportunities today against a good San Diego side who was Picked to finish last in the WCC, but if you've watched them play their last handful of matches, they certainly look like they're going to finish better than 10th in the West Coast Conference. And the goal for them is a top four finish in a very good league. You got Santa Clara, BYU, Pepperdine, three of kind of the flag bearers of the West Coast Conference, and then USD feels like it could feel right at the top of the midfield. And that tough conference, and four teams could get into the NCAA tournament from the WCC. It would have to be quite a conference slate and probably a win against Stanford for a fourth-place USD team to get into the NCAA tournament. But it is possible. 
foul at midfield, and that's Kennedy Wesley. Gets it off to the experienced center back, Madison Eisen. Making her second start of the season. Taking over for Avani Brandt in the starting lineup. Building through the back now, the Cardinal. Playing forward, looking for Engie. And a good idea, but Kevorkian's there to clean things up for the Toreros. Kevorkian has been really impressive in net, has made some really solid saves. Louise Lieberman really liking, obviously, her shot-stopping ability, but her communication as well. Has been impressed with the freshman. Has been really happy with the San Diego native. Evans. That gets it up into the supporter section here. Not the forest, but the other side. I have a great student section here. Of course, the students not on campus yet. But they'll be coming soon. Stanford on the quarter system. Rubenstein. Janone. One times it, but right to Evans. Montoya showing off her speed. Running the ball there for the Cardinal nicely, Ali Montoya. They switched the play. This is Grubel, the grad student from Santa Ana. On to her right, takes the shot a little high and wide. And it'll be a goal kick for Kevorkian here in the ninth minute. Abby Grubel this year, her fifth year on campus, two goals. She is a co-founder and the CEO of Elite Incorporated, which connects collegiate athletes and youth athletes for training and mentorship sessions. So a bright future for number 24 in white. Abby Grubel is tied for the second on the team last year with five goals. Brought down by the Toreros. Playing with three center backs. Thistleton, Broadbent, and Wallenswitz. This is Thistleton's first start of the season, the freshman from London. Here's the shot from beyond the box for Ike. It goes high. And so Stanford's starting to put its stamp down on this match here in the 10th minute. Ike mentioned Paul Ratcliffe really impressed with what she's done. She's been in training camps for USA at the U14, U15, U17 levels. Played with the San Jose Earthquakes Academy. Was a forward there in an attacking mid roll today. This is her fourth start of the season. For the Palo Alto native. And Evans. Another nice defensive play. We'll be calling her name a lot uh, defensively should San Diego be able to produce. Some moments in the final third. Evans has had a fantastic start to her collegiate career. The number one recruit in her class. Already earning one Pac-12 Defensive Player of the Week honor. Getting that on September 5th. Rubenstein on the throw. Evans. Nice ball over to Wesley.
Wright looking to turn. And here comes Eisen. Kosmeyer trying to flick one over to Grubel. Does take a deflection, and Thistleton's able to win it away for the Toreros. Angie. Schlichting. Schlichting, still her. Takes the shot, gets deflected by Eisen. Who was well positioned defensively. Schlichting, just a professional competitor. Has that competitive fire. Coach Lieberman saying. And you combine that with their skill, and you've got a very impactful player. Scored the game winner against Irvine last Thursday. Nice ball out by Pearson, finding Suzuki. Very technical player. And there's Elise Evans. Just great stuff again from Elise Evans, who has all sorts of national team experience. 2018 U15 CONCACAF. He's captain of the U16 side, has experience up to the U20 level. Grubel, right to Kevorkian. Cardinal with an early 4-2 shots edge in the first quarter hour of play. Wesley carrying into space. I'll build through the back here. Cardinal content to possess. This is a high possession team, and it was one reason why the exhibition that they had against the Chinese national team was so beneficial for the Cardinal. Playing against a team that was very possession oriented, that could hold on to it for long periods of time. See what it's like to go up against kind of a team like themselves in that matter. Rubenstein tries to thread one through for Montoya. Solid bit of defending there by Wallens was, but yeah. at the collegiate level, Stanford's going to have the large say of possession against just about anyone they play. As Montoya was unable to get on the end of that last ball through, but the Chinese national team top 20 in the FIFA rankings coming in at 16. They're professionals. And it was great to see kind of that professional attitude. Stanford eventually winning 1-0 on a goal in the 84th from Maya Doms. There's a shot from Ike. Oh, not quite for Montoya. Here's Kosmeyer to her left and she finishes. And Stanford takes a 1-0 lead in the 16th minute thanks to the fifth goal of the season from Lumi Kostmeyer. Well, here's the buildup. Great ball by Angie Eisen. A nice first touch, puts a shot on frame. Spilling that was Kevorkian. Second attempt from Montoya saved, but the third wasn't. And Lumi Kostmeyer has given Stanford the early edge. Just past the quarter hour mark here at Laird Q. Kagan Stadium. And the Cardinal, you know, they're not just satisfied with one goal. They're not the team to sit back after getting an early lead. They're looking for more, hungry for more. A 
nice ball by Janone. Pearson just has to boot that one forward a bit. And I think actually a throw-in will be given. Evans. Janone. Bad ball there. Here's Delaney Janone. Evans cutting that one down brilliantly. And played it off Schlichting as well. So it'll be a throw in for Stanford. Elise Evans, just some, some great stuff there. Paul Ratcliffe has been very pleased with her work this season. All the way back to Kavor again. Paul Ratcliffe saying about Elise Evans that she's done an amazing job as a freshman to step into a starting role. Her composure to bring the ball out of the back has really been impressive. Kostmeyer also really likes the quality of her passing and defending. That's all been really strong from Elise Evans, according to Paul Ratcliffe, as Campbell will come out to take that touch. San Diego looking to respond. Montoya, very nicely done. Evans, that didn't look good. She's down. That's rough. Just kind of tripped over the ball. And hopefully she's okay. She might have landed on the ball, which never feels good. Here it is again. That's hopefully nothing serious. Looks like she's holding her side, the freshman from Redwood City. Again, the number one recruit in her class who's gone off to a great start this season and in this match. And good to see her get up. The crowd gives her a round of applause, and it looks like she's staying in. So a good sign here for Elise Evans and the Cardinal. We have a moment. Let's take a look at that goal again. So Montoya, no. Kostmeyer, yes. After Ike's original shot. Her fifth of the season. That leads all Pac-12 freshmen. It's the 23rd goal of the season for Stanford as a team. And they are 12th in the country in goals. At least goals per game. A little more than three per contest. Kostmeyer. Can work in with it. Just had to make four saves already. Gave up a couple of rebounds on that eventual Situation that led to a goal. A good ball there by Rubenstein. This is Grubel cutting to her right. A good setup there by the Cardinal, though, and Paige Rubenstein brings that experience to the outside back position alongside Kennedy Wesley. There's the shot from Abby. For most of this season, it had been kind of an underclassman center back pairing with Elise Evans and Ivani Brandt. The sophomore started through the first six matches of the season. 
with senior outside backs. Paul Ratcliffe saying yeah, it's kind of usually done the other way around, but kind of funny how with this group that had been the case, but now they have certainly some more experience with Madison Eisen at the other center back spot with Avani Brandt out of the starting 11. Ike. Guerrero. With the tackle, it'll be a throw in for the Cardinal. Wesley into Kostmeyer. Goes over everyone's head. Angie will get there. Has support from Rubenstein. Two balls on the pitch. Let's get one of them out. Schlichting, native of Germany. San Diego get a throw in here. From the Utah transfer, Pearson. Oh, nice touch there by Suzuki, showing off that technical skill. Trying to get it back from Janone, but cut off by Leontini. Good bit of work there from Suzuki, regardless. Kosmeyer taken to ground, tackled. We play on. <laughs> this is Angie. Looking for Kosmar, that'll roll all the way through to Kevorkian. As we played half of the first half now. If you're just joining us, it was a goal in the 16th minute by Lumi Kostmeyer that has us at our current 1-0 scoreline in favor of the ninth-ranked Cardinal. They share that number nine ranking with another WCC team in Pepperdine. UCLA, the number one team in the country. Foul on the Cardinal. UCLA coached by Marguerite Alzasa, the former assistant of Paul Ratcliffe here at Stanford. A look at that last foul. And Paul Ratcliffe very happy to see the success of Marguerite Alzasa, talking with him last night. So she's a good friend, and he has no doubt that Alzasa will be a great head coach. And well, hey, you, you go to the state of North Carolina and you take down number one and number two in Duke, North Carolina in consecutive matches. North Carolina was number one, Duke was number two. You're going to turn some heads. and Very rightfully so, UCLA, the number one team in the country, also have a win against Santa Clara, which went to this college cup last year. Part of a great non-conference season for the Pac-12. Third best winning percentage among all conferences. The conference has won more than 70% of their matches overall. And every team at 500 or better, including the 6-1-0 Cardinal side. Most of the WCC has winning records as well. San Diego. Not one of those teams right now, but working closer to 500. Good ball out to Wesley. Solid spell of possession here for the Cardinal. Good one touch passing, passing in tight spaces. The Cardinal showing off its technical skill. Good ball forward by Ike for Montoya. Can she get there? Keeps it in. 
No, she doesn't. False alarm. And we'll get our first subs of the match. Four Cardinal players coming in. It'll be Samantha Williams, Amy Sayer, and for Stafford, number 11, Catherine Paulson. Catherine Paulson and Aki Yuasa. In for the Toreros is Layla Cajuano. Number five, freshman from Honolulu, Hawaii. Rubenstein. Oh, that gets through. Yuasa got a boot to it, but couldn't get a clean boot to it. So Kahoano on for Ashley Wright. So clean that up for San Diego. Kostmeyer, Montoya, Grubel, and Ike all to the Paul Ratcliffe sideline. <laughs> Rubenstein. All the way back to Evans. Janone. Providing some pressure, and Evans working out of that easily. This is Sayer. Amy Sayer, the junior from Australia. And the flag is up. Offside the call. Looking for Paulson alongside that far left edge of the box. Good to see Catherine Paulson out there. Missed all of last season with an injury alongside her identical twin, Sarah. Catherine, a redshirt sophomore. Another Bay Area product from Los Altos. There, there is a, a huge Bay Area influence on the Stanford soccer team. I'll get to in a bit, including that player right there, Elise Evans. Finding a SoCal friend of hers and Samantha Williams. Sayer. Amy, to her right, takes the shot. Nice save by Kevorkian, and doesn't spill a rebound there. So Kevorkian already with her fifth save. Cardinal really provided some high pressure. Sayer trying to get in the way of that boot from Kevorkian. It is nonstop. The Cardinal come at you in wave after wave after wave of pressure and opportunities, always asking questions. A very inquisitive side, if you will. But back to that Bay Area presence on this team. You know, when the Stanford soccer team, they always do a good job of getting club programs out here. This one is going to be scooped up by Ryan Campbell. And you figure, you know, when, when their girls growing up, they were watching the likes of, you know, going back a decade, a Kristen Press, a, a Teresa Noyola, Lindsey Taylor, you know, to like when – these players were probably in middle school watching uh, in high school Tierna Davidson on a lot of cook, Katarina Macario in high school for them. Like they saw Stanford excellence growing up in the Bay Area, going to these games, getting a chance to get autographs from them for team posters and stuff. And I'm sure that that kind of influence and, and Paul Ratcliffe mentioning that influence, you know, having those great role models made these kids want to be. Stanford soccer players, and now that they're of collegiate age, they're making a big impact as well. A great club soccer scene in the Bay Area as the Cardinal will have a free kick just outside the box. Leontini's on the ball here at the half hour mark. 
Four, player lining, four players lining up around the edge of the six. Low driven ball gets deflected back out. And Wesley will throw it in. Quickly to Leontini. Leontini makes a nice move. Crosses off. A dangerous ball near post. Couldn't link up with Williams. And Kavorki in there to do another bit of work. She has been busy. That's the ball from Leontini. Good idea. Sayer almost got there. The Toreros have been pinned in their defensive third much of the last 10 plus minutes or so. Trying to break out of it here. Let's have some sort of say of the ball for a little bit and quickly given back. Trying to find Janones. Janone and Schlichting up top for the Toreros. Tyson, go over the top. Wallenswiz is there, calmly playing it back to Kevorkian. But uh, it'll be a throw in for Stanford. Engie. Nice cut back to her left. Good touch, Paulson couldn't corral it. Another moment of intrigue around the area for the Cardinals. See it here. Paulson was able to control that one. Could have eventually landed something on Sports Center top 10. She was able to turn and finish off the play. Suzuki. Couldn't hold on to it. And here's Williams. Samantha Williams carrying into space. Out wide for Sayer. Not the right shape on that one. Looking back post and goal kick will lead to a few more subs for the Toreros. Sarah Evans, Cameron Maddox, and Bella Petey all checking in. So Cameron Maddox, our feature player in the open for San Diego, getting her first taste of action. Again, two goals, two points. Leads the team with six, uh, two goals, two assists for six points, I should say. The Snellville, Georgian native. And Louise Lieberman saying she just has a high understanding of the intricacies of the game at an advanced understanding for someone who is just a freshman in college. Comes from a great club program. Now won the ECNL National Championship earlier this year. Williams, oh, almost got through to Sayer. There was Broadbent to get in the way. Janone. Given to Sayer, she'll have a save from 30 plus. And it goes wide of the mark. Subs for Stanford now. Kelly Pagador and Naya Harrison will check in for Kennedy Wesley and Paige Rubenstein. So they change out their outside backs for the final 10 minutes of the first half. A couple of sophomores coming in in Pagador and Harrison. Harrison with an assist to her name this year. 
Pagador making her sixth appearance. That'll be a foul on Harrison. Running over Cameron Maddox. There is Nia Harrison, the president of Cardinal Black, which promotes social justice and highlights the black student athlete community. Had a chance to travel to Selma, Alabama for an educational and immersive journey this past July. Spoke about it with the, the Stanford Athletics Department. And has certainly been uh, using her voice and her platform for good. Janone tripping over the ball. Yuasa is there. This is Evans on the ground for Sayer. Here's Harrison. Sayer looking forward. Broadbent there with a solid head. Sayer back on it though. Amy Sayer. Cut down by Wallenswiz. Amy Sayer, always an impressive player to watch. This is Leontini. Evans will bring it forward. Evans with plenty of space in front of her. And Tini. Good work there by Pearson. There's Petey. Another very technical player for San Diego and a throw in here for the Toreros to be taken by Pearson. a whistle and maybe Guerrero a little fortunate it's not anything more than just a whistle so that gets cleared Pagador that'll be a foul against Stanford as Petey will kick it back. More on Bella Petey, talking about kind of her technical capabilities, very good with the ball at her feet. Dribble through tight spaces. Has a video, has videos online of her TikToks and other videos you can see just of just her great footwork and capabilities with the ball at her feet. This is Eisen. Looking for Angie. Sarah Evans worked off the ball. Coming back there was Paulson to help win it back for the Cardinal. Ison. Angie. Coming up on the final five minutes of the first half. It's been the 16th minute goal 
by Lumi Kosmeyer that has been the decider to this point. A couple of nice initial saves made by the player with the ball at her feet right now, Sophie Kevorkian, but eventually cleaned up by Lumi, who has since been replaced. I'm sure we'll see her in the second half. Ball stuck under the San Diego bench. Kahuano will throw it in. Won three state titles at Kamehameha. Part of a Fab Four group, as they called them. Four freshmen played all four years on varsity, won three state championships. That just skips over the boot of Leontini for a goal kick for Kevorkian. And went to La Jolla High. Also played volleyball in high school. Her father was a water polo player at Villanova. Wallens Wiz. Go back to Broadbent. Big leader for this team, according to Coach Lieberman. Stanford back on it. Back in, Yuasa tapping it over. And the shot is saved. Second attempt off the crossbar for Paulson. Oh, the flag stayed down. And the Cardinal had a golden opportunity to go up 2-0. Cardinal out shooting San Diego 14 to 2 in this match. Actually 15 to 2 now. Here's what could have been for Katherine Paulson and the Stanford Cardinal. First a, a good ball here by Aki Yuasa. The flag stayed down. Nice first save. Second one had Kevorkian beat, but hangs off the woodwork. And for Katherine Paulson, would have been her third career goal, second of the year. Angie slips. New forward is on for San Diego and Lexi Nobles. Unable to get it to her there. Sayer really working hard. Wallens was strong on the ball. Cardinal will have another 80 seconds or so to Try to make it 2-0 before halftime. Evans for Yuasa. Trying to touch that one through. Arizaki back on it. Had a chance to train with Bayern Munich when she was in Germany. Great experience for the freshman. Setting up one last attack, the Cardinal. Good ball by Sayer out to Harrison. Nia looking forward, a little too heavy on that ball forward, looking for Williams. Good idea. That'll likely do it from a Cardinal attacking perspective. Kevorkin, I don't think, will be in much of a rush to get this goal kick off. Ten, nine, <laughs> yeah, she's not eight, in any rush. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Williams. That'll do it.
45 minutes in the books. It is a 1-0 Stanford lead over the visiting Toreros. And this was the goal. Lumi Kosmeyer in the 16th minute putting the Cardinal up 1-0 for the freshman's fifth goal this season. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Stanford women's soccer going up against San Diego on Pac-12 Networks. Here at the half, it's 1-0. Number nine, Cardinal in front. Well, we have a bit of business to do, plenty of business to do actually here at Larry Q. Kagan Stadium. As the Cardinal look to improve to seven and one on the season. It's a WCC weekend for the Cardinal. They got Santa Clara coming up. The team that knocked them out of the NCAA tournament last year and a team that won the national championship two years ago. So that'll be a good one. Santa Clara's had a tough start to the season as we take a look at the United Soccer Coaches poll. This is the top 10. You do see Stanford tied for ninth with Pepperdine. Of course, UCLA, the number one team in the country. Stanford already has a top 10 win this year against Penn State, 2-0. The Nittany Lions uh, put the heat on late, but Jane Campbell had, or Jane Campbell, I mean Ryan Campbell, excuse me, get my Cardinal Campbell goalkeepers mixed up. Ryan Campbell had incredible saves, a couple of just brilliant stops late to keep it a 2-0 scoreline. That was the first top 10 win for the Cardinal in nearly three years since they defeated UCLA in the College Cup semis in December of 2019. It was a rough 2020-21 season for them. Didn't have a full training regimen to get ready for that year with all the COVID restrictions. Last year was much better, but Drew Santa Clara, a very good Santa Clara team in the first round. Both teams weren't in the top 16, so one of those, you put your regional opponents together, and even though that probably should have been a, a second weekend matchup, they face off in the first round. Came up a, a goal short against the Broncos. This year, looking to get back to the College Cup, it would be their 10th in 15 years if they can do it. San Diego, on the other hand, looking to get back to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2014. It would be their 14th overall tournament appearance. Jolene Janone will have the first touch for San Diego, and we're just about ready to roll here for minutes 46 through 90. Maddox getting the second half start for San Diego, along with Sarah Evans, that came off the bench in the first half. Grubel, Kostmeyer, Montoya all back out there. This is the starting 11 for Stanford. Here's Maddox. Maddox on her left, kind of slipped as she took the shot. Not threatening there to Ryan Campbell. I knew I was going to say Jane Campbell once today. I just knew it. Here's Ryan, a junior from Laguna Beach. Started six of seven matches coming in, so now seven of eight. Haley Craig got the start against DePaul and was named the player of the match for the team. Luxury of having two very capable goalkeepers. It's a, a nice problem for Paul Ratcliffe to have. Pearson playing it forward. Janone trying to get there. This will be a goal kick despite the Toreros' pleads for a corner. Yeah, that was off to know. Took a deflection off her just at the end there. All right, call by Karen Collado. Our referee in the center of the park today. Evans. For Leontini. Ike. Not quite. 
Angie. Still Angie. Top of the box. Ike can't get there. Good work by Wesley. Nice skill shown by Evans. Montoya running out of real estate to catch up to that one. And a goal kick coming up for Kevorkian. Player club with uh, Albion SC. Came on in the second half of the season opener at Denver. It was 1-0 when she came on for Ellen Casto and has started every match since and has played every minute except the final 12 against Long Beach State since that first half of the season opener. Louise Lieberman very pleased with the freshman keeper. Played into touch by the Terreros. Rubenstein with a quick restart on the throw in. That would be a foul. Yep. Pearson committing the crime there. Want a quick restart again. Montoya sizing up Pearson. Getting to the byline, and Wallace Wiz there to take it away for San Diego. Yeah, throwing for San Diego. Went with a 3-5-2 in the first half, the Toreros. As Leontini takes the shot. Oh, touched over the bar by Kevorkian. A great shot and a great save. It was great stuff all around here. As off the throw-in, it's Leontini to her left. And... What a save by Kevorkian, who has been standing on her head for a couple of these saves. Montoya is going to take the first corner of the match here for the Cardinal. Hand goes down. Plays it out to Rubenstein. Sends it in. And hits the top netting. Kevorkian had to just kind of see that one over the bar. And Leontini very nearly with the second goal of the match. She scored twice this year, scored once last year. Her high school coach called her a once in a generational player. Her time at Monta Vista High in Danville. And here's Montoya. Ike for Grubel. Oh, what a save again and cleaned up. It's the second brace of the season for Lumi Kostmeyer. <laughs> Grubel, first shot, no. Second shot, yes, for Lumi Kostmeyer. It's her sixth of the season. And the Cardinal finally have that second goal that they've been searching for for the better part of the last 40 minutes of game action. That one coming in the 52nd minute for Lumi Kostmeyer. So the task has gotten that much taller for San Diego. Kostmeyer had a brace against San Francisco's second match of the season. That's her second double of the year. 
And this is just match number eight for her. Too far in front of Grubel there. And Wright will throw it in. We we showed the the goals from that brace against USF that Kostmeyer had. Her first one, I mean, just absolutely brilliant. That strike came from about 35 yards, and it it, it absolutely had the keeper frozen. Well covered. Ike, great first touch. And here she comes, trying to play a through ball forward for Kostmeyer, trying to get her the hat trick. A great bit of work from Jasmine Ike, the skill oozing out of Ike. First team ECNL all conference in 2021. Had the game winning goal in the ECNL U17 national championship game against LAFC Slammers. Some high-level club competition. A yeah, goal kick for Ryan Campbell, who had U.S. national team experience with training camps from U14 to U17. Took herself out of the national team system for a little bit after getting injured in one of the camps. Wanted some more balance in her life, she said. Starting to keep her for the Cardinal. And here's Ike with acres of space, carrying into that space, onto her left, taking the shot, and a rocket of a shot goes just high. Jasmine Ike is turning it up a notch for 12 here in the second half. Yet to score. She has an assist, but based on the way she's playing this afternoon, that first goal could be coming before the next 36 minutes are up. Nice ball to Angie. The Cardinal inquiring for their third. Here's Ike. That's just wide. It's coming, that goal's coming. Good ball here laid off by Montoya for Ike. Kind of off a half stride, still put a lot of pace behind it. Shows you her strength for the Bryant Academy product. Here in Palo Alto, Montoya. Still alley. Rubenstein will throw it in. Played 10 minutes of the second half. Goal in the 52nd minute from Lumi Kostmeyer. After she scored in the 16th. For her second two goal match of the young season. Ike. That one blasted into clearance. Forcing Evans to recover. Wesley, controlled by Angie. With Eden Quiros on her back. One of the senior leaders for that Torero team. Kosmar, nice ball. This is Montoya carrying into the box, cutting it back. Nobody home, and Evans sends it away, but not out of danger yet, the Toreros. Kept in by Rubenstein, and here's Leontini, puts it in from 25 plus, a low screamer, finds the back of the net. What a goal from Julia Leontini, and the Cardinal with a 3-0 lead here in the 57th minute.
credit Paige Rubenstein there, laid off by Angie, who will get the assist. And perfectly slotted from well beyond the box by Julia Leontini. Runs onto it. That is unsavable. Hope Solo's not getting that one. Manuel Neuer's not getting that one. That is a colasso. Leontini with her third of the season. Already tripling her goal output from her sophomore season. Foul on the Cardinal. See if San Diego can get on the front foot here a little bit. Already scored against a Pac-12 team this year. And they lost to Colorado. That was on Pac-12 Networks. Lost 5-1. And it was a match in which Louise Lieberman, as I started to ask her about it, she's like, we want this one back. We want that one back against Colorado. Felt like they could have played them much tighter now in the season than when they did. Match day number two, opening weekend. Colorado's one thing and Stanford's another. Perhaps the last two years haven't been up to the program standards as far as postseason runs and number of wins, but still very dangerous. And they look, they're looking like every bit of the team that was super dangerous pre-pandemic. Won national titles in 2017, 2019, not to mention 2011 and a college cup run in 2018 as well. Angie trying to play this one direct over the top to Grubel. Nice first touch. Oh, beautiful second touch. And here comes Abby, top of the box, takes the shot in Kevorkian, able to stop that one. And cleans up her own rebound. Oh, great bit of work there from Abby Grubel. These first two touches, immaculate. That was her second touch. And gets off a very pacey shot here for the top of the box. Put it right at Kevorkian. For the save. Pearson. Just nowhere to go. Surrounded by white kits everywhere she looks. <laughs> Broadbent takes it down. Montoya keeping it in. And we'll get our first sub of the second half. And we're going to get Katie Duong. First time we've seen her today, the Minnesota transfer. Second year on the farm for the senior out of Portland, Oregon. She was Big Ten all frosh back in 2019. Second team all Big Ten as well in 2020. Player who has outstanding technical ability and vision. And her high school coach said she's the best player to ever come out of her high school, which is Jesuit High in Portland, which is an athletic factory for many sports. So high praise for the USU 20 CONCACAF selection back in 2020 as a defensive midfielder. And a free kick here for the Cardinal. It'll be Montoya who's on it. Rubenstein also in the area. Montoya sends it in. Lofted ball. And it gets past Kevorkian, but headed high. It went off the head of Leontini. 
find her second goal. So with Kostmeyer's double, it is the fifth time this year that the Cardinal have had a player with two goals in a match. They did it in each of the first four matches, and it was four different players. Samantha Williams, Lumi Kostmeyer, Amy Sayer, and Ali Montoya. Kostmeyer gets an initial boot to that. But it will be off the Toreros. This last touch, Broadbent, yeah, just kind of deflected off her thigh. And so Cardinal back in with a corner. You, you wonder how much time Kostmeyer has left to try to get this hat trick. Paul Ratcliffe does like to play a lot of players. Here's Grubel. Wesley. Takes a tour left. Sizing up Janone to the end line, and uh, that will be a goal kick. Sub for San Diego as we take a look at this last run here from Wesley. It'll be Lexi Nobles replacing Cameron Maddox. So Nobles out of North Tustin, California. Sophomore forward replacing the freshman from Snellville, Georgia. Up top. Right now, she and Schlichting in the attack for the Toreros. Nobles has a goal this year, Schlichting with one as well. In Kiros. Play that one out wide. Kiros is actually a high school teammate of Katie Myers. As this is taken away, Lumi Kostmeyer, there's the hat trick! Lumi Kostmeyer with her third goal of the match coming in the 63rd minute, and it's 4-0 Cardinal. I had a feeling it might be coming from Lumi. Beautiful touch ahead by Jasmine Ike. And Kostmeyer knows what to do with it from 20 yards. And Jasmine Ike has been brilliant in this second half. Dispossesses the Torero, boots it right to Kostmeyer, who runs onto it nicely. And Lumi Kostmeyer has her third goal of the match. Seventh this season. So Avani Brandt and Sarah Paulson come on for Elise Evans and Kennedy Wesley. Brandt the center back and looks like Paulson's going to slot in as an outside back. Hey, why not four goals for Kostmeyer today? Petey. There's Kiros taking it down. But as we were saying, high school teammate was Kiros of Katie Meyer, who unfortunately passed away last March. And Kiros had a heartfelt post on social media asking Paul Ratcliffe about it. And he's saying that Katie's in our thoughts every day. Think about her every day. We want to have a good season for her this year. And the Cardinal wearing warm-up shirts is saying mental health matters today and, and for their matches this year. Katie Meyer, such a, a big part of this team, of course. Uh, her heroics in the 2019 National Championship game and penalty kicks with a couple of huge stops against North Carolina. And they want to have a... Great season in, in Katie's honor this year, the Cardinal. Here's Kostmeyer, who's had a great match. That's going to stay in. Montoya. Montoya trying to thread that through to Ike, who's been very deserving of a goal this afternoon. Did get the assist there on that last one. And they officially haven't given it to her yet, but she should get it when and this uh, box score becomes official. 
Assists officially credit to in this one, Montoya, Engie, Rubenstein, and Grubel. The Toreros looking to strike forward. Brandt, who was a starting center back the first six matches of the year, did not play against DePaul. It was Eisen who took her spot in the starting lineup. That's a good bit of work for the New York native. Here's Sarah Paulson. She and her twin, Catherine, did everything together growing up. They were put in the same classes. A lot of people couldn't tell them apart. They are one of 50 sister duos on NCAA Division I women's soccer teams this year. One of three in the Pac-12. One of two sets of twins in the Pac-12 with the gray twins of Cal, Anissa and Amaya. Nice ball by Duong forward there looking for Kostmeyer. And there are something like 20, 22 sets of twins. I think it's 22 sets of twins uh, in Division I women's soccer. Here's a shot from uh, well beyond the box. Rubenstein running onto that one, and a slew of subs here for the Cardinal. Emily Chow is going to get her first bit of action this season. Logan Smith, Aki Yuasa. Coming off for Abby Grubel, Jasmine Ike, Lumi Kosmeyer, Paige Rubenstein, and Ali Montoya. And Marone Suzuki is on for USD. Nia Harrison was, was the fifth sub to come on for the Cardinal. Duong. And here's Smith, freshman from Idaho, taking on Pearson. Nice cut in, but Pearson there to shut it down. Sarah Paulson to Chow. Native of Phoenix, the junior mid. That's ball by Avani Brandt. Sayer looking out wide for Chow. Emily gets there, crosses on the ground, and it'll be a goal kick. Goal kick here for Kevorkian. And you see the 4 0 scoreline, but she is still made some really nice saves, nine in all. A couple of goals off rebounds, a couple of just blasts from distance that were great shots. Another nice bit of work from Aki Yuasa. Ryan Campbell. Content to possess in the back for the moment, the Cardinal. Sarah Paulson. Forward for Sayer, nice touch for Chow. Oh, well-shaped ball there for Logan Smith. Sayer lost it. <laughs> Suzuki. And she wins a throw-in for the Toreros. Suzuki, I thought, had one of the more intelligent plays I've seen this year. 
And their match against San Diego State, her, her buddy Eden Quiroz had just gotten shoved by a player on San Diego State. So she inserted herself into the fracas there and put herself right next to the San Diego State player, said something to her to goad her, got pushed, pointed to the official, uh, pointed to her, to the official and said, look, I just got pushed by her. And that player got shown a red card. Uh, and <laughs> you could see Suzuki smile after it. She knew, she knew what she was doing. She just has a high IQ. And as a result of that effort, got her team a, a player up situation for the final 21 minutes of the match. Here's Schlichting, a very crafty player, Suzuki. Schlichting to her left. This could be dangerous. Oh, Nia Harrison, the great shot block there. Was that full stretch for that one? Put her body on the line, Harrison. We'll get a sub for San Diego. A couple. Looks like Cameron Maddox is coming back on. And for the Cardinal, Kelly Pagador is in for Leontini. What a very nice goal today. There's Maddox. Pagador will throw it in. Under 20 minutes to play. Forward for Sayer. Amy Sayer looking for Logan Smith. She's on side, takes a touch. Here's the shot, and it finds the back of the net. It's the first collegiate career goal for Logan Smith. And the Cardinal leads 5 0 in the 72nd minute. Great ball from Amy Sayer. Smith stays on side, takes one touch, and then slots it home. Logan Smith with her third point of the season after an assist earlier this year. A freshman forward from Boise, Idaho. Puts it right between the legs of Kevorkian. Logan Smith makes it a 5-0 lead for the Cardinal. The route is on here to Laird Q. Kagan. Kahuano. And, and trust me, the Cardinal believe a, a sixth goal is in store. And it will work for it for sure. Harrison plays one out nicely to Smith. Crosses on. I was looking for Sayer near post, but Kevorkian cuts off the pass in. Not much you can do if you're Kevorkian in those 1v1 situations uh, with an oncoming attacker. Just the five goals, they're not her fault. And Stanford has just been supremely clinical here in the second half. Could have had a second goal in the first half. It was 1-0 at the break. And the floodgates have opened here at Laird Q in the second half. Now shooting the Toreros 26 to 3. There's Pagador. Smith wins that one nicely for the Cardinal. There is a Torero down. And to her feet. And hobbling is Brianna Pearson. Hopefully she's okay. The Utah transfer was a, a big part of those Utes teams. Started 16 matches last year. Had her first career goal against Oregon State. 
for the Utes. And Hideki Nakata, the former Stanford assistant. And a grad transfer for the Toreros. Wants to get into sports broadcasting, the journalism major at Utah. We'll save a seat for her at Pac-12 Networks. Paulson, good ball. Chow gets cut off, though, by Broadbent, the Maryland transfer. Paulson. Maddox. Petey. Good work there by Pagador. Cardinal, they got a big one coming up on Sunday against Santa Clara. And the Broncos might be two and five, but they're still very dangerous. They got a 4-1 win at Oregon last Thursday. They've shown decade after decade that they can compete with Pac-12 sides and then some. And two national championships to their name under Jerry Smith. That will be a fun one down in the South Bay at Santa Clara Sunday night. That'll be the last non-conference match of the season for the Cardinal. Again, conference play at USC. Which had a big win earlier this year against TCU, which was ranked in the top 10 at the time. Be a throw in here for San Diego. And Daniela Guerrero comes on for Petey. There's Bella Petey, the sophomore from Alpine, California. Has one assist this year. Guerrero, a freshman from Lakeland, Florida. Very physical play. And a whistle comes in favor of the Toreros. Foul on Nia Harrison. Quiroz. Yuasa gets there, goes to ground, foul on Janone. It's a double header here at Larry Q. Kagan Stadium. It's the Pac-12 opener for the men as you take a look at the foul. Yeah, just a, a boot to the quad, or to the calf, I should say. Get my body parts right. Nicely done by Duong. Stanford UCLA Pac-12 opener. I'll be right here on Pac-12 Networks at 6 p.m. Uh, Pac-12 Bay Area will have that. Sayer off that one wide. And next up on Pac-12 Networks, we got men's soccer Pac-12 opener between Cal and San Diego State. Cal with a new head coach this year, Leonard Griffin. Replacing the retired Kevin Grimes who led the Golden Bears for more than 20 years. It's a great head coach for Cal. A regular in the NCAA tournament. Got to the NCAA quarterfinals one year. Under his watchful eye, they were the number one team in the country for six weeks. In the 2013 season under Grimes. Now it's the Leonard Griffin era. Coming off their first win. That gets played out of the park by Harrison. Here's Wright, Gig Harbor, Washington kid, looking back post. 
And Campbell cuts it off. Kahoano is sneaking alongside that back post. But Ryan Campbell well up to the task. Hasn't had to make a save in this one. 11 minutes away from a clean sheet, which would be her third of the season. It's a goals against average of 0 0.53. Also part of one combined shutout with Haley Craig. Janone for Guerrero. Yuasa, Aki Yuasa wins it. Looking forward for Sayer. Amy's on to it. Sayer has some support coming with Duong. She'll take the shot. Takes a deflection, a hard deflection, and Kevorkian will fall on it. And there is an injured Torero back on the other side of the field. I think that's Guerrero, 26. And they do have to stop the clock for Guerrero. Daniela Guerrero. Hopefully she's OK. Making her second start of the year today, Guerrero. Training staff will take a look at her. <laughs> Looks like she's pointing to her right leg. You, know, you can't quite tell, don't want to speculate, but you know, wish her the best of health. Guerrero this year. Three shots to her name coming into this one. Has played 56 minutes of this match. Brings her to north of 300 minutes on the season. Born in Hackensack, New Jersey. Grew up in Florida. Went to the McKeel Academy of Technology. Was a team captain. Was named class valedictorian. It was all county selection there. Played in the development, county, uh, development academy, I should say, with the West Florida Flames. Daniela Guerrero. And at least sitting up now. But visibly in pain, something you never like to see. Chance for a hydration break for players on both sides. For what has so far been a, a very positive afternoon for the Cardinal and Guerrero. You see, unable to put any weight on that right leg as she has helped off the pitch. And hopefully. It is nothing too serious. So she'll be replaced by Laney Steed, a transfer from Florida. Two career goals for the first three years. It's her fourth, uh, fourth year junior because of COVID. Actually played for a former Pac-12 coach last year at Florida, and Tony Amato who was the head coach at Arizona, did great things for the Wildcats, but got fired after one year. <laughs> Gators had a rough season last year. Smith. We resume action. Here's Sayer. Oh, very physical. Uh, foul will be on Amy Sayer, who does not agree with that call. Uh, Karen Collado. She feels like she got held right there, and you see the reaction. It was Wright who ended up on the ground, so Sayer who got whistled. 
Broad bent, nicely done. Very well played by Pagador. Cardinal picked to finish first in the Pac-12. It's the seventh time in the last eight years they've been picked to top the Pac-12 table. Went 7-3-1 in league play last year. Part of a 13-6-1 campaign overall. Headed down by Pagador. The Toreros picked to finish 10th in the WCC, a very good soccering conference. I mentioned it in the first half. The Toreros confident that they can secure themselves a top four finish in the league. Be a top of the midfield, if you will. Nice touch by Suzuki. Is that out for right? Lofting one in. Janone gets ahead to it, and that'll be the first save, uh, actually second save of the match for Ryan Campbell. Uh, Jane Campbell, uh, or Ryan Campbell, yeah. Again, the save. Jane Campbell had a fantastic career as a keeper here for the Cardinal. Kahuano stepping in front of that one nicely was Sarah Paulson. Aki Yuasa looking forward. Logan Smith trying to get there. Made a heck of an effort. Be a throw in for the Cardinal. Good work here by Naya Harrison. Uh, should say that was a foul on Cameron Maddox. So, free kick coming up for the Cardinal. It'll be Duong. Making her sixth appearance of the season. The edge of the area, Chow gets a boot on it and forces Kevorkian to make her 10th save. Pagador. Sayer controlling. Has options. Nicely done for Pagador. Smith trying to bring it down. Pinballing around and cleared by Wallenswiz. Coming up on the final five minutes here of the second half. Cardinal closing in on their seventh win of the season. Logan Smith. Quite the battle there with Wright wins the throw in. And the Stanford bench very enthusiastic. A couple more subs are going to come in. Catherine Paulson and Samantha Williams for the Cardinal. Good to see Brianna Pearson back in for the Toreros. Hobbled off earlier and Sarah Evans back on. As Laney Steed will take a seat for San Diego.
Harrison. Chow trying to get on to the end of that one. Here's Paulson. Catherine oh, making a nice move. She's out there with her twin sis, Sarah. Both on at the same time. Duong going to send one in just over the head of Sarah, of Catherine, I should say. Williams for Paulson and Williams. Able to win that one back to Harrison. Into space for Uasa. That'll be a goal kick. Just under four to play here. It was 1-0 at the half. And then it was a downpour of goals in the second for the Cardinal. Third time this year they've scored five in a match. Scored five against Sacramento State, five against UC Santa Barbara, and now five against San Diego. Will there be a sixth? Still time for that. Known, looking to turn. Maya Harrison having none of that. Broadbent powering that one forward, and Ison will hit it out of the park. We'll get another sub in for San Diego. It'll be Josephine Schlichting. Replacing Delaney Janone. Delaney Steed, to correct something from earlier, is still out there. The Florida transfer. Harrison will throw it in. Final 85 seconds of work. And it has been a comprehensive performance for the Cardinal. Now shooting the Toreros 29 to 5, getting four of their five goals in the second half, and a hat trick from Lumi Kostmeyer. Do all. So San Diego with the loss will drop to 2-4-2, two, and, two, and they'll get ready to take on Cal Poly next Thursday on the road. Stanford again at Santa Clara for their final non-conference match. The Cardinal will carry a 7-1 and one record into that fixture with the Broncos. Foul on USD. That's so common. Ten, nine, Cardinal. Eight, seven, In no six, hurry. Five, four, three, two, so take the throw one, in, and two. that'll do it. Your final score, Stanford five, San Diego nil. The Cardinal improving to 7-1.
And the Toreros dropping to two, four, and two. The hero of the day, number 33, hanging out on the back of your screen, back center there. She had the hat trick for the Cardinal. First scoring in the 16th minute right here. This made it 1-0 after a couple of rebounds were conceded. That was the only goal of the half for the Cardinal. But Kostmeyer and Stanford were not done, not at all. So 1-0 at the break, and then as we take another look at that first goal from Lumi Kostmeyer. Again, this was in the 16th minute to make it 1-0. And then here in the 52nd minute, played off for Grubel, who had it saved, but Kostmeyer cleaning up another rebound. That made it 2-0 in the 52nd minute. And then one more for Lumi Kostmeyer. That already gave her her second double of the season. And then in the 63rd minute, off a turnover, runs onto this one from the edge of the box and puts it in for her first career hat trick. The dispossession there of Jasmine Ike sending it right to Kostmeyer and Lumi with her third goal of the match. Seven on the season for Kostmeyer now and 27 on the season for Stanford. Well, that will do it for us today. Again, your final score, 5-0 Stanford over San Diego. We will next send you to Cal for Cal men's soccer against San Diego State. For our producer and director, Mike Fitzgerald, and our entire crew, thank you for watching Pac-12 Women's Soccer on the Pac-12 Network. Have a good afternoon, everyone.